Hi, my name is Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. If you're a regular subscriber, uh, first of all, thank you. We've gone over a million views, but you should really know by now that I'm going to address this topic, how to set boundaries for your husband in a way that defies virtually all the other marriage so-called experts out there. I know personally that marriage counseling, that Western psychology does not work. How do I know? Because I was a divorce mediator. Over 20 years ago, I switched my practice to helping people and I wanted to have something that actually worked because people would come to me wanting a divorce and you know how there's people and you look at them and you go, man, they make a great couple. Those were the people who were coming to me for a divorce. Why should there be over a 50% divorce rate? It's because societal understanding of marriage is useless. It's wrong. It's basically wrong. They don't even know why you get married. I'll tell you why you get married. You get married to be happy. You get married to feel love, unconditional love, but they stray away from reality out of fear. They're afraid to offend anyone who might not believe in God. So they don't talk about God. They're afraid to offend anyone who calls them a fanatic because, well, spirituality isn't scientific. Nonsense. Of course, spirituality is scientific. Love, you know how it's defined by most people? You look it up. I looked it up. Love is defined as an increased like, an emotion. You know better than that. Love is the only reality, actually. It is what you and I are made of. We're souls. We are love itself. But we're in a body. We have a mind. These are possessions. And so we don't align ourselves with who we actually are. We don't align ourselves with our soul. Or we'd have no problem saying, I love you. We have no problem identifying love as the reality, the reason we get married. And so they come up with all these things in Western psychology to keep busy because that's how they make money. They don't mean harm. They just don't know any better. But the truth is setting a boundary for your husband. What does that mean? That means essentially my husband offended me, right? That's what it means. He's crossed a line, this magic line that I just came up with. How do I set a boundary? How do I let him know that hurts my feelings? I'm not mocking you when I do it that way because I just had a video for the men too about setting boundaries. Same thing. Here's the idea of boundaries, the real idea, the true idea of boundaries. Okay. We see things based on a habit that we have formed of how we see things. What happens is energy comes in through the eyes. Energy comes in through the ears. It has no definition. We hear things according to past experiences. We see things according to past experiences. The pure energy coming in has to be translated by your mind. It's a very individual thing. So when we are offended, when we are gladdened, it's because of our past experiences. That's just the reality. That's the truth. It's scientific what I just shared with you. So what happens is when you quote unquote set a boundary in your own mind, it's based on your past experiences, your calculation. He may not intend to offend you. Why would he want to offend you? He's your husband. But, we come up with these things. And then the psychologist encourages us to come up with these things. But we should not hear things in the way where we are offended. We should hear things from a neutral perspective. 
if it's offensive to us, our first reaction should be, why am I offended by this? Now, it could be a straight out insult. Still, why am I offended by this? What's happening when someone insults you is they are venting. They're speaking from their mind. They're insulted, so they want to insult you back. But who cares about that? What's happening is it's their stuff. Do you understand? It's not about you. Even if it is intended to be about you, it's not if you pull yourself back and you go, hey, that's how they see me. There's criticism. Maybe I need to evaluate in myself whether I have part of that trait and then get rid of it. Because we all talk about evolution. What is evolution? Evolution is the individual who is getting rid of their flaws, identifying more and more with their heart. Evolution that is not geared towards identifying yourself as a soul is not evolution. It's just not. Being more sophisticated in a worldly sense, it's not evolution. It's just learning more stuff. It's just becoming more identified in the mundane world. But we go for happiness. We go for love. Those are the qualities that we want to develop, to nurture, cultivate within ourselves. So as we do, that's evolution. Boundaries, if you have boundaries, you should think of yourself as overly sensitive and get rid of those boundaries. You don't have to take what your husband does or says personally. I waited all this time to put it in that terminology because it could be insulting. I don't want you to be insulted. I want you to learn from this. You see, one of the things we don't learn in this world, and it's no one's fault, I'm not blaming anybody. We don't learn that we are meant to, intended to. It's an imperative. We have to learn how to master our mind because when we don't, our mind, meaning our emotions, our inner reactions, our instinctive reactions, our sensitivities, all of these things. There, I'm not going to go over it in this video, but those are software programs gone awry in our minds. We need to master our minds. I've been working at this for a very long time and I've taught thousands of people how to using our courses that we have. I'm not trying to sell you the course. What I'm trying to do is show you this is the most important thing that we teach at the Marriage Foundation. Not everyone knows this. We're the Marriage Foundation, right? It's all about marriages, right? But our approach is to work on yourself as an individual. And then you can have an incredible marriage. But if you don't work on yourself, working on yourself doesn't mean beating yourself up. It means mastering your mind. So who you are, which is the soul, love, kindness is a manifestation of the soul. Compassion is a manifestation of the soul. Sensitivity is a manifestation of an emotion. It isn't you. You are a soul. Now, what happens when you master your mind and you start becoming more and more aligned with who you actually are, the soul? Your husband will respond. Now, you don't do it for that reason. Do it for the selfish reason of, I want to tap into the joy within myself. I want to be a happier person. I want to be calm. You don't have to be impressed by outer conditions all the time. You don't have to be tweaked ever. I'm not. Once in a while I slip, of course. I'm human, but mostly when someone is 
co crossing my line, <laughs> I just smile. I'm not affected. Learn how to be self-contained as a loving lover of your husband as the soul your soulmates right be his soulmate don't ask him to not cross the line don't ask him to respect your boundary when you do that what good is that going to do your marriage what good is that going to do your marriage just by looking this up about boundaries your marriage is already off track do you know that it is at a minimum read one of my books but probably if you really want to get the most out of your marriage because I don't believe in just fixing your marriage so it's okay you should have the ultimate experience when you're married you should feel never ending joy never ending love that's what you should be feeling that's what marriages are all about so forget this trendy nonsense about boundaries now little education okay the greatest gift that you have been given by God is free will so you never want to impose in any way there's many ways to do it you can manipulate your husband coerce him talk him into something don't because that gift that was given to you a free choice was also given to him and when we're married to our soulmate we don't want to be critical of them because they don't make choices that you agree with that's not our role our role as a spouse is to love 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 never criticize never condemn never not in your mind either not just outwardly but to respect support love it's all about love marriage is all about love you know if you look up love you'll see it's an increased like that's what they tell you but you know better love is that experience that you have on such a high level that the mind can't even wrap its arms around it but that's what we all seek that's what we all crave because we're souls don't turn your back on your true higher self learn to love learn to live in your marriage at the highest level you're not supposed to be sad ever you're not supposed to be resentful or angry or critical those are in your mind they're supposed to be pushed out you're supposed to master your mind so you could experience your true self doesn't it make sense of course it does like this video subscribe to the channel visit again i am paul friedman i founded the marriage foundation and i'm grateful to you for coming and giving me the opportunity to explain things to you in a way that really makes sense the marriage foundation is all about marriage not just marriage but joy-filled marriage love-filled marriage god bless you take care thank you